this is How to Souls. My name is Rach and welcome back to our Elden Ring walkthrough. Today we're going to cover the Death Touched Catacombs. So if you've been following this walkthrough correctly, you should have the Saints Bridge. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, the Saints Bridge site of grace just up here in the north of Limgrave. Um, the catacombs that we're looking for is around by... it's like here-ish. Um, you can't miss it, as always, with the catacombs. It's got a big stone arch door with a wooden door. You you can't miss it. Uh, but on the way, um, we're going to tackle an NPC that we actually just ran by last time we were here because we weren't like we weren't doing this area last time we were here. We were just passing through. Um, so we're going to go up here and meet Alexander. If you're not interested in m meeting Alexander and you want to go straight to the dungeon, I do have time codes so you can use those. Uh, so from the grace, we did hear him on our way past. There is a path just on the left hand side. If we go back. Hello. Can you hear me? We can just head up here. Up the cliff. There he is there. Yes, he's a pot. Alexander is pot friend. <laughs> so we're going to get off torrent so we can have a wee chat with him. Oh, my stars. I am Alexander the Iron Fist. Absolutely going to help him out. Alexander has a fantastic storyline. Every NPC in this game has a fantastic storyline. Um, some are easier to follow than others. But yeah, so he wants you to give you <laughs> he wants you to give him a good old smack from behind with something nice and big. Uh well I mean my sword is pretty large, so we're gonna hold R2, do a big ol' heckin' charge attack, and see if we can get him out. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Just hit him with enough force. Uh, charge attacks tend to do the trick. It might take, depending on what your weapon is, if you don't have the Bloodhound Fang, it might take you a few goes. Triumphant Delight is our reward. And if we chat to him, we get another one. Well played, good lady. Ha 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 ha. Gives us a little bit of meat. Thanks. <laughs> Delicious. Um, this actually boosts your physical attack, which could be quite good for us, actually. Yeah, something we can just eat. It's uh, one use, but you can learn how to craft it and you can find it out in a bit. Out in a bit, the world. Um, but yeah, chat to him one more time. He's journeying to the east. Into Caled, he's looking for Red Main Castle where there is a festival of war. So we uh, already know what that is, right? And if you don't, well, you'll find out. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm curious the the mix of people who are playing Elden Ring for the first time and who are watching this as a bit of a refresher because I tell you what, it's been really great going on a little refresher course myself. Right, so that's Alexander's quest line uh, started, which is fantastic. We're going to go back on the road and then we're going to stick to the right and head up this little sort of slant up here. If we literally just stick with the cliff on our left hand side, you'll see very quickly. Oh my God, I pinned it like right on the money. Let's go. Um, you will see this little spirit guy like glowing. He's just like, oh no, what's going on in there? They're all death touched. It's a catacombs, it's very spooky. Yeah, that's a little clue uh, that this catacombs has a death root inside. Um, but yes, funnily enough, death touched catacombs has a death root. <laughs> go figure. Okay, uh, will we just rest? Yeah, just rest. We've got actually quite a few runes here. Uh, oh, 7,800 to level up. I forgot we did the whole stuff with the, with the dragon. Yeah, we're, we're quite high level actually for this stage in the game. Uh, so with catacombs, wonderfully, the boss door is actually right in front of us, but we have to do the whole dungeon in order to actually open the door. I love this layout. I love not having to do a big old slog every time I want to fight a boss because the bosses are starting to get harder. Your main enemies in this catacombs, in this dungeon, are these skeletons. So you can kill them once and if you just sort of walk away and leave them, they'll actually come back to life every single time. So what you want to do is you got to kill them and then as they're trying to reanimate, just hit them again and then they are dead dead. So they can be dead but you got to make them dead dead. Uh, now this is something that proves to be quite difficult. One by one it's not too bad uh, in this kind of situation, but when you do have multiple 
uh, it does get a wee bitty hectic. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to uh, come down here. We are going to pull some skeletons. So I don't know, just keep an ear out. I did hear that one uh, constructing itself, I guess. <laughs> Building itself up. Uh, so we're just going to try and take them one at a time. There's an archer over there on the left. So if we just try and stay out of his line of sight. Uh, get this one. When you've got archers in the room, the key is to just keep moving. And they can't hit you if you just keep moving. Uh, so we're going to take him out, actually, just so he's not... Oh, flip! Mate, that was a good shot! You you caught me right out of my roll. Here's another glove wart we can pick up. Just a grave one. We're actually going to go just um, around, like, under the stairs here. We have one skeleton here. Skeleton archer. And he comes. We do have another one just over on the right there, but we're going to try and take these one at a time. I'm just going to heal, actually, now that I think about it. There we go. Uh, and this one here. Another grave glove for it there. As always, like, the unwritten rule slash definitely written rule is just to take your time, kill things one at a time. Or twice. Kill things twice. <laughs> kill things twice, one at a time. Um, in here... We're going to get these two skeletons at the end are going to animate. Just going to, may as well just get these and you can sort of take advantage as they are. Oh, I was going to say you can take advantage as they are waking up, but like that guy was ready for me. I'm trying to get this. You do get a good few seconds to hit them, but sometimes it gets a bit hectic and uh, you don't manage it, but it's not the end of the world. Right. Okay. So with those, we're going to go around here. Bear in mind. Uh, here, uh, don't jump down just yet. We're gonna go like round the long way, I reckon. Grabbing the Uchigatana, very good weapon. These two animate here, and there is another one. Oh, perfect. I mean, I would have liked to have killed it rather than knocked it down. Yeah, there's another one at the end here. By coming up here first and taking out these archers. I can't get this one to animate. Well, his head's down there, so... There we go. Okay, cool. I'm just moving because there's one that I knocked down. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. But either way, these archers are now no longer on this ledge. We're actually going to backtrack on ourselves now to the room where we were in before. We had a bit of a crossroads. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, if we go around this way, it means it's just a bit easier uh, to tackle this rim because there's a lot of skeletons that animate in this rim. Uh, so if I just... There we go. Wait for him. So we can get this one. And then get this one. If we try and, like, put the pillar between us and the archer. I think I'm going to get ourselves a shield. I think that'll make a big difference. Because the, the Bloodhound Fang does block a decent amount, like if I show you here. Come here. It does block a decent amount. But it's not as good as a shield would be. Yeah, we really need to get that archer. Like, that's... I tried to kill them first to make our lives easier. And it's actually maybe made it harder. Because he's hitting us now under... Oh, come on! Put your bow away, did you? Yeah, it's frustrating. Even knowing what to do is frustrating. Okay. Get him! Nice, I think that's them all for now. Uh, when we go ahead and uh, pull the lever up there, there are another two. I actually think more than two. Uh, that will animate at the back of the room there, but we're going to be ready for them. So if we come over here. I picked up this. Or I didn't, sorry. I forgot to pick up this in the last catacombs. This grave violet. It's for crafting. Uh, oh, a blood rose again. We need that for crafting. Oh, the skeletons have, have animated there, so they're waiting for us. We're just going to pull the lever and then we'll rise to meet them. Okay, so now that's essentially our, our shortcut. Massive shortcut. Oh, two at a time, baby. Yeah. Cream Eggman would be proud. Oh, that was beautiful. Fantastic. So that's actually the catacombs done. Well, apart from the boss, that is. Yeah, that's good. They're just wee short ones in Limgrave, but as you progress through the game into the different lands, 
in the lands between. Uh, they do get a lot longer and a lot more uh, difficult, for sure. Uh, so now that the boss door is open, we're just going to head back to the Grace and Rest to get all our stuff back. I still don't have enough runes to level, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> What's my health at again? I've got 17 health. I mean, like, that could always be higher. It's, it's fine for just now. Grabbing these root resins because we can make uh, the blood grease with those and just any kind of grease with the root resin. So the boss of the Death Touch Catacombs is a Black Knife Assassin. Now they, this one in particular has, uh, it's injured. It doesn't start at full health. It starts at like something like 60, 70% health. So, and it doesn't have a lot of health to begin with. They go down quite quickly. In fact, I don't think this one's gonna last very long with our Bloodhound Fang. Uh, but a couple pieces of advice for this one. Uh, she has, well, all of them, they have ridiculously low points. So if you have like a fast weapon, um, of any kind really, uh, anything you do is probably going to interrupt her. So you can be a bit more aggressive, uh, you don't have to wait for a window, you can just like most of the time just like get on in there and if, as long as you hit first before she hits you, you'll stagger her. Um, you can parry her in that but like it's, it's not even that necessary. Um, backstabs, backstabs work well as well. Uh, we do have spirit ashes, uh, I'd recommend the jellyfish for this one just to have as a tank. Uh, but I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop on Flame Grant Me Strength and a Blood Grease. And we're gonna see how quickly we can take this down. So, two hand my weapon, I forgot about that. There we go. Yeah, it's like 60, 65% health, isn't it? So we're right, jump attack. Yeah, look at that health. <laughs> if you're a caster, like if you're trying to do like Flame Slaying, they're very dodgy and you will find like most like humanoid enemies are like this. They're very hard to hit with magic um, because they just dodge. But uh, yeah, this one shouldn't give you much bother at all. <laughs> God, I was longer standing at the golden fog than I was actually fighting the boss, man. Um, I'm just wasting blood grease at this point. So for killing that boss, we get the Assassin's Crimson Dagger, uh, which is a talisman, which increases your... No, it, uh, heals your heals your, critical hits restore HP that's it so whenever you get a uh, riposte or backstab get a crit uh, it gives you a tiny little bit of health back which is kind of cool if you're doing that play style maybe you're fighting a crucible knight etc uh, and then in this chest here is the death root uh, so we have already found the guy who is interested in getting these so we can go and take it to him right away because it does make sense to do that in this episode. I'm just picking up these resins because, you know, going through the grease, aren't I? Uh, I still don't have enough runes to level up, that's funny. So if you missed the first couple parts of this walkthrough and you didn't have this unlocked, um, you can go and check those out. But we travelled up here to the Bestial Sanctum through a teleporter that's found just behind the third church of Madica in Limgrave. Takes us all the way up here to the Bestial Sanctum. Grank! is uh, he's the one that's wanting these death roots. And we did get a clue for that when we first spoke to him. So now that we've got one, let's uh, let's hand it over. So I've only got the one, so yeah. Oh. Death. <laughs> Okay, so as always, you know, one is not enough, he wants more. And the more you bring him, the more uh, rewards you'll get. You do start getting like bestial incantations and stuff like that, which are fun to play around with. Uh, for now though, just for giving him one, we get the claw mark seal and a beast eye. So the that claw seal, so here's our seal that we have at the minute, finger seal, that I've just accidentally unequipped, never mind. Um, this one has a passive boost it'll make bestial incantations do more damage so if you are interested in using like those big like heckin claw abilities and things like that you're going to want to use the claw mark seal uh leveled up obviously it'll do a lot more damage bestial eye said to tremble when close to death root that's going to be very useful for the rest of a whole rest of our adventure in helping us make sure that we find 
all the rest of the death route. Most of them are quite easy to find uh, in their respective dungeons from their respective bosses, but there is one in particular that's uh, pretty well hidden. So it's worth just coming back here and handing in one to get the eye uh, so that you can find the rest much easier. Uh, and with that, that was Death Touch Catacombs, Black Knife Assassin, uh, a boss that will show up again many times in future with the same sort of moveset. So if you don't manage to kill it in three hits, it's not such a bad idea to learn the moveset. I think you'll find that with like most like cave bosses, most dungeon bosses, like they turn up a few more times. Uh, so it's not such a bad thing dying a few times to them while they're easy and learning their movesets. So don't be discouraged if you didn't do it as quick as I did because this sword is insane. Um, yeah, that's us. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, then Torrent gets head pats. I'll see you in the next one if you subscribe. If you don't subscribe, I might see you, but who knows? If you want to make sure that we do, then you better subscribe. Eh, yeah. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you later.